Good morning, everyone. Thank you. <clears throat> um, Capsorexis is a very, very important step. And um, if we don't have an intact capsorexis, it really jeopardizes the rest of our surgery. And you know from femtosecond cataract surgery, the aim of creating a perfect capsorexis is to create one that is circular, that is centered, so that your lens is centered and well supported by appropriate size to support the optic. <clears throat> and uh, this is very important because it impacts on the accuracy of your, your refractive outcome and it prevents lens tilt and decentration. So you can see here a needle capsorexis, which most of us would probably be starting out with as we convert from extra capsular or small incision cataract surgery to phacal malsecation. What is important in using a needle is the way in which the needle is bent. It's bent at 45 degrees. So you can see the bevel facing upwards a little rather than vertically as we do a tin can. And you must stay on the surface of the lens so that you don't dig into the cortex and that would then impede your view. <clears throat> so the initial step is actually shown here. We just dig gently into the eye to puncture the capsule and we use the bevel to slice the entire capsule and then we push to bring up that flap. So once we roll that over, we can then just drag it around gently. Now when we try to convert that to utrata, it's the same, we do the initial step by slicing, not digging, and once we've created that flap, we then grasp that with the utrata forceps, just the flap, stay on the surface, keep that always folded over, and you can just control that best in that manner. <clears throat> so as I said, what we want to do is to keep the flap, when we raise it, to bring it over, and once you bring it over to keep it on the surface and that actually helps to control the direction of your pool and that gives you a complete and circular capsulorexis. Do not rip, which means do not pull that capsule under the surface of your capsular plane because that gives you a poorer control and usually does not give you a nice round capsulorexis but a clover-shaped capsulorexis. You see many expert surgeons just using the utrata forceps. You can use that to create the initial cuts like what you see here, and then continue tearing. That's what I showed you earlier. Just keep that capsule folded over, and that gives you that perfectly round capsule rectus. Now, note here this Y shape, which I feel is actually the most appropriate um, place where, where you would regrasp your capsule. If you try to regress a capsule somewhere here, you would find that it is difficult sometimes to open your, your forceps, especially if your incision gets tighter and tighter. If you're trying to do a 1.8 mm incision, finally, you would find that it would be very difficult to use the standard you try to forceps. But if you form a habit whereby you grasp your forceps here, because um, your forceps are further in, you can easily open up your tips to, to grasp the capsule easily without talking your incision. What about the direction of pull? If you want to maintain the radius you've started out at, you just continue pulling. When you're near the tearing edge, you go circumferentially. As that flap gets longer, you actually move more radially. If you want to enlarge, angle the flap outwards. If you want to make the diameter smaller, angle it inwards. How about complications that we may face as we begin doing capsulorexis? What about the runaway rexis? The first thing to do is ensure that you have adequate viscoelastic and what you want to do is to deepen the anterior chamber that flattens the anterior capsule and gives you better control. This often happens when you are reaching the subincisional area where actually your forceps have been moving in and out and you have been opening up the incision and that inadvertently allows the viscoelastic to escape from the eye. So that shallows the anterior chamber, the capsule becomes curved and you lose control. Now, a little procedure I will show you in a short while is a very, very important procedure that you want to learn because it's often a rescue procedure that helps you to bring back that runaway capsulorexis before it reaches the equator. What you do uh, is you uh, lay Dr. the Chi, capsule flap. Uh, Dr. Chi, uh, can we get the slides first before Dr. Chi <coughs> shows us this important step? Thank you. Yes, thank you. Um, what you want to do is you lay the, flat, the capsule flap flat on and then you pull radially actually inwards and downwards, all right, towards the posterior pole. I'll show you that in a video soon. Um, once the rexus has actually run right out, 
Well, you can continue doing that capsular tear by reinitiating either using the needle or a vana scissors. And what you choose really depends on where it has run out. I'll show you videos with this. So my resident was doing this case, and you can see the block, the eye was actually looking upwards, and he had a poor view. Now, seeing is everything. If you don't have a good view, you can't control. So you can see that in this case, the capsular excess had run out here, and I've taken over. Now you want to grasp closer than this, all right? So I'm going to regrasp a little closer. You can see it's almost out to the equator. You grasp close to the tearing edge and pull radially and a little posteriorly. All right, that actually brings the tearing edge closer now. You can repeat that again, and then I've brought it right in here. You can see it's complete. Right, so this is a very important little uh, trick that you want to learn that was described by Brian Little. How about a rexus that has gone wrong? Look at the many steps in this resident's capsorexis that are not right. He started up correctly and then he fails to fold over, so he's beginning to lose control. It's going out, especially in the submissional area. You can see he's gone right out. He's beginning to rip. He hasn't got that fold over. And of course, it goes right out. Now he's grabbing on the anterior capsule rather than the flap. He's grabbing the capsule and it's gone really right out. So first thing to do is stop, inject viscoelastic, deepen, and then he's going to try to pull it in. He's grabbing a little too anteriorly, but it's working, and he manages to pull it back in. So that's laying the flap flat and not folding it over and then pulling it back in. So although he, he had problems here, he managed to rescue that and bring it back to safety. How about capsulorexes that have gone wrong, like in this case here? This is enlarging it with the for, uh, vanus forceps or intraocular forceps. In this case here, you can use a needle. So if it has gone right, right out somewhere far away from you, the opposite direction where your incision is, you would probably want to use a needle. Whereas when it's somewhere near the incision, it's easier to use the scissors. So for a beginner, we would recommend with an incomplete capsorexis to convert to a manual technique. Right, remove the nucleus manually. If you are experienced and the nucleus is not too hard, proceed with care, especially for the steps of hydrodissection and nucleus disassembly. If the nucleus is very hard, I sometimes even consider it safer to convert to a manual technique. Um, always remember, if you have an incomplete capsorexis, that when you remove your instruments, you should maintain the anterior chamber space and depth so that it does not cause uh, the posterior vitreous pressure to actually split that capsorexis uh, across the posterior capsule. Now moving on to hydrodissection, the importance of hydrodissection cannot be overemphasized. The purpose is to create that cortical cleavage to mobilize the nucleus so that you do not stress the zonules. Now if you do a, a proper uh, cortical cleavage, you would have also less um, cortical material to remove during INA. So <clears throat> what you want to do is to place the cannula in the subcapsular space. Now what is very important is that as you do the injection, uh, you do not want to move your tip. You want to keep it in that position so that there's the cortical seal around it and it allows the fluid to be directed posteriorly rather than out again into the anterior chamber. And uh, what we want to do is give repeated small aliquots of BSS as you inject. Right? So you do not want to over forcefully inject because that may cause... So these are the end points. All right? I'm doing the hydro dissection. Just stay there. Just a bit of fluid. And you can see I can rotate already. Right? You don't actually stir up all the cortex and you have a very good view and you have very little cortical material left. So the end points are actually a complete fluid wave. You look at the anterior chamber, it begins to first shallow as the fluid passes behind the nucleus and lifts the nucleus, which only becomes visible a little later after the anterior chamber shallows, and then you will begin to see the, the OVD escape. Okay, have a look at this case here. Very little fluid going through, but I'm just rocking the, the nucleus, and that encourages the fluid to actually just pass right across to complete your hydrodissection. So with that amount of hydrodissection, you can see a very clear view with little cortical stirrup. Okay, so you don't need to put in a lot, but as long as where you place your tip of the cannula is in an effective position, the amount you eject, the amount of force you apply is adequate to allow that fluid to pass right across, you would have released that nucleus adequately. 
and you can see here my resident, I actually shortened this video. She, um, this resident went in like, I think at least 20, 30 times, multiple times, stirring up all the cortex. And then in the end, I said, okay, just stop, just stop. All right, let's see what you're doing. Show me the amount of fluid. So this is how my resident was injecting. And I said, this is how I do it. All right, I give a little spurt, a little bit, and then just watch the wave as it progresses. Right? If you see the wave progressing halfway across, continue without moving your tip of the cannula and progressively inject. So after that, the next case, this is my resident, same resident doing it. So after the instruction, you can see she's effective, is going progressively. All right? So halfway through, you just slow down. You can see, in fact, this cortex just begins to split as the nucleus rises. Okay, so she's going to do it again on this other side. Just staying still just in the subcapsular place and it's progressively moving and next you find that it's effective. The nucleus can then be mobilized safely. So this is the last video I'm going to show you. If you create a capsular rex, a very large, sorry, very large, sorry, the photo, but the pupils, uh, the, the capsular rex is rather small and this is my resident giving a big blast of fluid. All right, be very careful. You see the nucleus lift, even the iris prolapsing, and that pupil snap sign that my colleague Dr. Ronyo has described in the literature. And he goes in the second time, and you begin to see that the nucleus is slowly sinking. All right, so be very ca careful because if you have a small capsule excess, a, a large nucleus, and you give too big a bolus, what happens is that it begins to rupture and drop the nucleus. I'd just like to invite you to Singapore to uh, uh, attend with us the APACRS that is in, held in July 11th to 14th. Thank you.